Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this fourth Sunday of Advent. Whoever you are, wherever you are, wherever you have been, you are a beloved child of God. You are welcome in the presence of God, and you're welcome with us in this time of worship. The fourth Sunday of Advent is always a special Sunday because our time of waiting is almost over and our anticipation is, is boiling over and we know what is coming. We know the gift that we are receiving on Christmas, and that is the gift of God's love. That's the theme of our worship this morning, love. Love is what will save us all. Love is what the Savior is. Love is what is. <laughs> love is God and God is love. God gives us love this morning. Mary receives it. And we remember that whoever we are, that is our inheritance, the love of God. That's the, the stream in which we wade. That is the air that we breathe. So welcome to this time of worship. We are about to light our fourth Advent candle and the Schlegel family is going to light the candle of love for us this morning. From Isaiah 52. Awake, awake, and put on your strength, O city of God. Shake yourself from the dust. Rise up, O captive people of God. For thus says the Lord, You were sold into captivity, and now you shall be redeemed without money, but by the name of the Lord. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger, who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation. Listen! Your lookouts raise up their voices. Together they sing for joy, for the Lord has comforted his people, and he has redeemed his people. We light the candle of love, seeing before us a new light from God. Our scripture this morning is the familiar story of the angel visiting Mary and telling her that she is uh, not only going to be pregnant, she's going to be pregnant with the Savior of the world. The angel tells her not to be afraid, and she wonders how these things can be. The angel explains to her that she's found favor with God, that God is with her in a special way, and that God is going to come to be with all the people in a special way to save them, to redeem them. And Mary's response is, let it be with me according to God's will. She responds to God's gift of love with love of her own. Janine White is here to read this special story for us. Merry Christmas to everybody. I'm going to read the um, uh, readings for today. It's uh, taken from Luke 1, 26 through 38. Taking this from the International Version Bible. It's called The Birth of Jesus Foretold. And it starts out, verse 26, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you are highly favored, the Lord is with you. 
Mary was greatly troubled by his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call him Jesus. And he will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she, who is, was said to be unable to conceive, is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. One, two, three, and... down at Christmas, love, all lovely, love divine, love was born at Christmas, star and angel gave a sign, love came down at Christmas, love, all lovely, love divine, was born at Christmas, star and angel gave the sign. Worship we the Godhead, love incarnate, love divine. Worship we our Jesus, God where we forsake. Love shall be our portion, love be yours and love be mine, love to God and all of us, love for free and gift and son. say this is the greatest story ever told and sometimes I feel like oh that's quite a, quite a cliche it's a little bit trite but then on the fourth Sunday of Advent when we read this story gosh I feel like this is the greatest story ever told here we have an ordinary teenage girl and she probably did not know what her life was going to be like on one hand but also had a pretty good idea of what it was going to be like on the other I mean, life was laid out for women in those days and for men too. It was kind of chosen for you just based on your condition in life, your status in life. And here she was engaged to a man and so she could probably see her future in her mind. She'd get married, she'd have children, she would work hard to just feed her family and sustain them. But then something comes along and interrupts all that normalcy. The angel, the messenger of God, comes to her and says, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. The angel tells her she has found favor with God. That God has come to be with her in a special way. God has noticed her. She's not ordinary. She's not a run-of-the-mill teenager. She's not just like everybody else. Maybe that's what everyone thought when they saw her or looked at her, that she's just an ordinary girl, but that's not what God saw. What did she do to find God's favor? How was she special? I don't know, 
but God knows. God chose her. God saw her. God saw that she was not just someone to be written off, not just someone to be put on the treadmill and, and passed along, but she was beloved. So uh, the angel tells her, you have found favor with God and you are going to have a son and he will be great. He will be called the son of the most high. I mean, the most high. Here is a girl who probably felt like she was pretty low. In any pecking order of the day, she was on the low end, maybe the lowest end. But here's the messenger of God telling her that her son will be great, the son of the most high. And she asks, how can this be? Because I am a virgin. How is this going to work? She doesn't say, uh, are you kidding me? Are you crazy? Are you sure you've got the right person? She doesn't say, are you, no, that's not going to happen. Nothing good ever happens to people like me. She doesn't say, um, you're crazy. This is not how God works. God has already picked who has favor and who doesn't, and it's not me. She doesn't respond with any kind of doubt. She responds with wonder. Wonder at how God is going to do these things through her. Not that God should pick her. She doesn't doubt that part. She wonders about how it's going to work. The angel tells her, that the Holy Spirit will come to be with her. It will overpower her and the child within her will be holy. Of his kingdom, there will be no end. So she asks, how is this gonna work? And the answer is, God is with you. God's spirit is with you. And her answer back is, let it be with me according to God's word. Her answer is, let God work in me. Let me be a part of God's idea. She, she gives permission, she gives acceptance, and she receives this news uh, with love. She is, she's receptive, she's ready to let God do this new thing. She's not filled with doubt or cynicism pessimism, or fear. She's filled with hope, wonder, and love. Around this time of year, you know, we seem to have like the same conversations in our circles around this time of year. And one of the conversations that I always uh, hear around me is a conversation about one of those, um, one of the newer Christmas songs, Mary, Did You Know? Now, maybe some of you love this song, and I I don't mean to step on your toes if you love it. <laughs> but especially in clergy women's circles, um, we have a little uh, bone to pick with this song. This is a little bit of a thorn in our side, this Mary Did You Know song. And you, you might have heard this song before. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would someday walk on water? Um, and it kind of, it goes on to say all the things that Jesus would do, including how he would die. But it's all, it's the refrain, Mary, did you know? You know, you know, <laughs> Mary, did you know, you know, the reason this song rubs us the wrong way just a bit is that Mary actually did know <laughs> in the passage, just following this one, she goes to her cousin, Elizabeth. Remember, we read this portion last Sunday and she begins to sing this song of what God will do through her son. And she sings about how the, uh, the lowly will be raised up and the mighty will be brought down and the hungry will be filled and the rich will be sent away empty and how God is going to turn the world upside down and right all the wrongs. Yes, Mary knew. Mary knew who Jesus was. In fact, she heard first. The angel came to her and told her, your son will be called the son of the most high of his kingdom there will be no end uh, he will reign forever so yeah mary knew <laughs> and we get a little bit feisty about that this time of year having said all that i do despite myself find myself wondering mary did you know <laughs> i'm 
Sorry, I can't help it. Did you know what it was going to feel like? Did you know how hard it would be? Did you know that you'd be ostracized? Did you know that there would come a day where your son would have harsh words for you? Did you know that there would come a day where you'd have to push him into the spotlight? You would have to tell him who he was and what he was meant to do? Did you know the anguish it would, it would uh, take on your heart? Did you know what it would be like to give him over to the world knowing that the world wasn't ready for him? I do find myself wondering if she knew how hard it would be and what she would have to go through. When I think of myself as a teenage girl, 15 or 16 years old, I was naive and sheltered. And I didn't know how harsh the world could be, especially when you're trying to change the world, especially when you're trying to, to say how radical God's love is. But Mary and I were very different. We had very different lives. And I would assume that when she became pregnant before marriage, she got a good taste of how harsh the world could be. And so maybe, maybe Mary did know Maybe she did have an inkling that this was going to require a lot of her, that it was going to be um, painful, that she was going to have to make sacrifices, that maybe her worst fears would come to fruition. I don't know. I don't know if she knew that or she just knew that uh, God was doing a new thing. But one thing I do know is that she knew God would be with her no matter what. Maybe she didn't know how hard it would be. Maybe she, maybe she did know how much it would hurt. But regardless of that, she knew that God would be with her. And that is her North Star. That's her, her core value, her guiding principle, is that she can do those things because God is with her. Nothing is impossible with God. A mother can live through great pain. Ordinary people can do extraordinary things. We all can do hard things because God is with us. This has been a very difficult time. I was talking with uh, David and Carol Tinney this week, and I can't remember exactly how the conversation was going, but we were talking about just life, pandemic life. And Carol said something like, you know, this has just broken all of our hearts. All of our hearts. It's just broken all of our hearts. And when your heart is broken, actually life goes on. And life goes on and you get to choose how to live after your heart has been broken. Carol didn't say all of this. This is kind of what made, I, I started thinking about. Yes, our hearts have been broken. And now what do we do? Because when your hearts are broken, you've got some choices to make. And you can choose to try to heal that pain by, by just holding everything you have so close to you. When your heart is broken, your instinct is to just take everything that is dear and hold it close so that nothing else can be broken, so that nothing else can be lost. And you just wanna keep what you have. And you can become kind of insular, kind of uh, self-focused out of your pain. I'm sure we've all had times where we felt like that or where we've seen that in others and we understand it, right? But that's not the only way to react, the only way to live beyond a broken heart. If your heart has been broken, you can choose to actually go the opposite way and open yourself up even more, to let your heart break wide open, to let other people in, to share what little you have left with those who have also had a broken heart. And I think we're seeing this a lot in the pandemic. We're seeing people respond out of fear of what their children will go through, uh, fear of what the future holds for them, for their own employment, maybe their, their marriage, their relationship, how to live with week upon week of isolation. It's, it's understandable 
that we would react to those things with anger and fear and um, holding on to what we have and shutting down in some ways. But haven't we also seen kind of the opposite where people just let their hearts break wide open and they, um, they find new ways to give and new ways to connect. The, um, you know, social media and the news is actually full of these good news stories of uh, UPS drivers who recognize the children on their route and they have a little moment of a dance party <laughs> and, and the mom films it because here's this moment of connection in this separated world, right? Um, aren't we just seeing those stories everywhere where we, our broken hearts actually become the thing that connect us and it actually leads to healing? I saw two headlines this week. That, uh, that illustrated this for me. One headline was um, about how the very wealthy are wondering how they can become first in line for the vaccine, or at least bump up the line quite a bit. And people asking, I'll give $25,000 if I can get a shot of the vaccine. <laughs> and then I saw a headline where at a hospital, uh, the janitor, one of the janitors who works with the uh, in the ICU, he got his shot before the chief of staff because he was actually in a more vulnerable position than the chief of staff. And the chief of staff is the one who shared that headline. And he said, I'm so glad that these are the values my hospital lives out. We have two choices when our hearts are broken. We can try to just hang on to everything we have and protect our own lives at all costs. And when we protect our own lives at all costs, that necessarily means that someone else is gonna be the cost of us protecting what we have. Do we want to be those people who shut ourselves off out of our very understandable pain and fear, who shut ourselves off to others? Or do we want to be like Mary whose heart broke wide open, who might have known how hard it would be, and yet she said yes anyway. And she gave herself to God, she gave herself to her child, she gave herself to all of humanity, and she shared that broken heart. She shared that heart that, that was broken by this amazing love that God gives. What kind of people do we want to be? We are living through this time where our hearts are broken. And it's understandable if sometimes we just have to shut down in pain. But I guess I would, I would hope that we would accept God's uh, invitation to let those broken hearts move us to compassion for others, to, to sharing our pain with others, and to sharing what we have with others, to recognizing you are just as afraid as I am. You have just as much to lose as I do. So let's take what little we have left and we'll share it with one another. And that act of sharing love will be the reminder that we have found favor with God, that God sees us, that God knows we are not just ordinary throwaway people, but we are special and God will come to be with us. I don't know what the future holds. I don't know how tough it will be, but I do know that God will be with us. And so nothing will be impossible. We can do hard things. We can do love things. We can receive God's love as Mary did, and we can share our hearts with the world as Mary did. And then God's kingdom will have no end. Thanks be to God. Amen. Two, three, four.
Dear friends, I know that this is not going to be the Christmas that we really want, but I have faith that this can be the Christmas that we need. This can be a Christmas where we remember that, uh, that God comes in the simplicity, that God comes in, in the shortage, and that actually God brings an abundance. So we might not have uh, the, the number of gatherings we want, the size of gatherings, um, but God will still be with us. We're gonna have a Christmas Eve service and we'll have it uh, offered in two ways. It's going to be pre-recorded, so you can watch it anytime Christmas Eve, um, you know, with your family or however you wanna do it. It'll be on YouTube and Facebook, our normal channels. But we're also going to watch our Christmas Eve service together through a Zoom call. And, um, and we'll have an opportunity to kind of share that silent night candlelight there at the end. So make sure you're on our email list because that's where the Zoom link will be. Uh, feel free to share that Zoom link with family and friends. I only ask that you just don't post it on Facebook or the internet because then that, that brings out the internet creepers and that's not the kind of Christmas we want or need. So, uh, but please just feel free to email or text that invitation to whoever might need some Christmas spirit this year. One thing, uh, isn't our music fantastic? Our music is such an invitation to us to come and see what God has done, what God is doing, even and especially in this very unusual Christmas. So we have some great music for you this week that will just, um, I know it's hard to not be in our, in our special place with our special people, but I think this music will communicate to you that God is with you where you are and that we are all with each other because we carry each other in our hearts, in God's spirit. So here is to a God-filled Christmas. Let's receive our benediction. Bear witness to the love of God in this world so that those for whom love is a stranger will find in you generous friends. The love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit and saints be yours now and forever.